Hi there guys and girls, it's that British gamer and video free that I'm recording and will upload today is my take on the modern gaming industry and basically what's going wrong <clears throat> there's a lot going wrong everyone knows there's a problem everyone knows that gaming there's a cancer in gaming and I kind of touched on it in my last video so we went from an era of people making games <coughs> oh god sorry um, making games and the industry wasn't so big I mean in the NES era obviously it wasn't so big and it's grown and it's grown and the games have got bigger and bigger and the hardware more and more complex and they sit there and uh, they tell us that it costs them so much money to develop a game and they can't possibly make enough money from game sales without sticking freemium type loot boxes into their games can't possibly make a profit without that nope no way they haven't done it for 20 30 years before they can't do it now sorry just doesn't work um, of course I'm being completely fucking sarcastic they're making money hand hand over fist and even without I mean DLC well the loot box stuff is just fucking disgusting anyone who supports loot boxes is the problem and this is this is partly why this video is going to be probably going to get me some flack it is partly well it is gamers fault that the gaming industry is full of cancer right now we have nobody to blame but ourselves all you fucking whales out there who spend thousands of pounds on these freaking freemium style bloody loot box systems in games and gave the developers the idea that all oh, these people will spend all sorts of money on this crap we've come to a situation now where you everything that was included in a game and as I said I touched on this but everything that would be included in a game like really good example Mega Man X just one example you play the game you beat it or you can play the game and beat it in a certain way and get a uh, and get a, a special bonus thing um, I can't remember if it was 1 or X2 that had the Shadouken um, but yeah you, that would be premium DLC now that would be 3 99 and an extra shitty level it wouldn't be satisfying I mean, even EA used to give you cheat codes. I remember completing fucking FIFA International Soccer on the SNES. And when you won a tournament, or when you won a league, at the end, it would, across the screen, would bounce a button combination. You type that button combination in, it would unlock cheats. I had, a, like, a paper, this is how bad it was. And gamers today just will not understand this. When I was playing FIFA International Soccer, I wanted to unlock all the cheats. When you play the game over and over again, you unlock different cheats. I had a bit of paper with all the cheats written on it from what I had unlocked. Um, I remember playing GoldenEye and to get like big head mode and golden guns and all that, you had to complete certain things in certain times and or meet certain objectives. That would be DLC now. You see, the problem is there are people and this problem comes across in, in, in MMOs a lot as well but it's starting to bleed into the mainstream a lot more there are these people who will sit there and go I don't have time to play the game I want to be able to spend money to unlock everything I'm sorry you are not a gamer you do not get to claim you are a gamer if all you want to do is spend your money to unlock everything a gamer will unlock everything, it doesn't matter how long it will take, and if you can't unlock it because you don't have the skill, tough fucking shit. Get good. In World of Warcraft, I can't mythic raid because I'm not good enough. I don't go to the forum forums and tell them to make fucking mythic easier. I, if I want to do it, I'll have to nut down and, and get good. I can't be bothered. I'll just 
raid heroic and normal. I'm perfectly happy with that, and I'll watch the mythic only phase on YouTube. But there are some people, if there was an option in World of Warcraft, or in any game, they would pay money to just bypass it all. You pay money to bypass the game. This is what you want to do. When these people say, I don't have the time, I want to pay. What you're doing, you're paying to bypass the game. The point of progression isn't to buy your way to the top. It's to watch your character grow, progress, increase in strength, get better abilities and skills, you know. And then eventually, when you've unlocked everything, you are a god. I found this in Shadow of Mordor, which I've enjoyed for three ninety nine. I wouldn't have bought it new, and I went by Shadow of War, not for shit. Um, I had a great deal of fun. At first, it was very hard because you were very weak, and as you unlocked more abilities and more skills and hunted more things and did more of the challenges, your health bar gets bigger, your special bar gets bigger, you can fire more. You know, that's all good. But when you get games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 and what they wanted to do, to get that, someone would have just had to have bought a load of crystals and opened a load of loot boxes and hoped to get lucky. You see, I actually, I do have a problem with cosmetic, well with any, any shops in full paid games. I have a massive problem with that. I don't like the World of Warcraft shop. I think they're pushing their fucking luck. I really do. I think it's disgusting they have a shop. The reason being is they charge you $9.99 a month to play the game, they charge you for the expansion packs, and then they have a shop on top of that. That just screams of greed, and they had to learn the hard way, because during Warlords of Draenor, when they cut out flying, they were introducing a flying mount to left, right and centre, and no content to the game, and people were going, um, this is like the third mount you've introduced in Warlords, and we're still on this patch, and we still haven't had this, and we still haven't had this, and it's getting a bit obvious that you're fucking doing nothing except sponging us for all the money that you fucking can. Now, they pulled their finger out and started making a good game. I'm still not happy with them, though. They, they, they still got a long way to go. Um, but there's a lot of things that gamers have done over the years that have allowed... Companies have done things, and instead of pushing back and saying no, gamers have flocked to it in droves. Like, when I, I talked about pre-orders, Pre-orders used to mean something. Pre-orders actually had a meaning. Like with um, Wind Waker, you couldn't buy that game for shit. You had to pre-order it or you weren't getting it for a good few weeks after it was released. And as a, a nice little gesture, if you pre-ordered it, you got a free bonus disc with admittedly like N64 and NES um, Zelda games. They didn't have to do it. It was just a, f a nice free little extra that they gave you. It didn't affect the main game. It wasn't a extra content for the main game just because you pre-ordered. That is pre-ordering done right. I have no issue with special editions either. I have a few special editions. Like my Budokai 3 special edition. I actually went out and re-bought Budokai 3 just because the special edition was amazing. And um, it, it actually... I think it was cheaper than what I paid for the normal edition, which was kind of mental. But there there are things that gaming companies could do that wouldn't be so fucking predatory and obvious. Yet, because there are some fucking retarded gamers out there who will do anything to get an advantage or don't give a shit or just want to pay money to skip the game for some reason, gaming companies have become more bold and more brash and they've tried more and more shit over the years and like I said it's only gamers fault a lot of this is you guys fault I mean when it comes to in-game stores I have no problem with free-to-play game having an in-game store an example of a store done kind of right is Star Trek Online that's free to play you can pay a subscription and they'll give you some in-game currency every month or you can buy in-game currency and, and buy stuff from the store, or you can grind in-game, get dilithium, 
and buy in-game currency for the store. Or, you, you, you know, you can do all sorts... You don't have to buy the currency, basically. Every so often, they put their lifetime subscription on um, on sale. I bought it about two, three years ago now. And um, it was 100 quid. But when their subscription's like 12, 13 pound a month, that's more than paid for itself. I get currency every month. I get access to all this awesome stuff. It's basically like, or I, I paid 100 pound. But if I... I've, if I'd, I was playing it a lot, and I mean I haven't played it really for about the last nine months, but I've got my value out of it, and I do log in every now and again and get the freebies that they give you. Um, <laughs> but that's an example of it done right. It's free to play, um, and also it's not completely. It is more so necessary now than it used to be with the t tier sh six ships, because before you could just get. Well, you needed to buy a tier 5 ship from the store, so yeah, now I kind of... Yeah, basically there's, um... The top tiers of ships are really only available on the store, as far as I'm aware. As I said, I haven't played for months, so I could be very wrong. Um, as a lifer, they give you a tier 5 ship free and some other bits anyway. Um, but an example, obviously, of my opinion... Uh, like, another example of a good free-to-play game that does sell skins. It does have loot boxes too, but... It's more their in-game currency store that you can buy stuff with, um, where the, and uh, it's um, oh, Heroes of the Storm. That's free to play. MOBA. You can buy skins or characters for gold in game. Uh, some of them, some of the skins you can only buy for real money. Um, you can get loot boxes. I think you can buy the loot boxes for real money. But generally, the loot boxes have only got what's in the store, so I don't really know why you'd buy loot boxes and just buy in-game currency and buy what you actually want. So you've got the option to do either or. And also, I think they have um, they do have special loot boxes for events which have special skins in them and what have you. I don't deny them that sort of stuff, um, but it's a bit predatory. It's still a, that's that's really pushing it. If it was a, a full pay game, then it would that, that I would not be happy with that. But as a free to play game, they're pushing it, but they're just for me, they're just about within it. You don't need to buy them; they're only really skins. Um, you can buy characters with in game gold. It, it doesn't really matter. But like, like as I said, the really predatory ones, Shadow of War, you get fucking orcs out of the boxes. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't get game things out of, you shouldn't get things like that for the game in a box and Forza oh my god they've gone crazy on Forza and um, oh, that MMA fighting game as well that's gone nuts for loot boxes and uh, it's just just and it, funnily enough a lot of these are EA a lot of them are and <laughs> they don't learn they come out the other day and said oh we didn't sell as many copies of this game Gaff put Trump microtransactions on to make up the slack. It's like you sold seven fucking million copies of the game. Seven million! If you can't make a decent profit off seven million game sales, you're doing something fucking wrong. Because I'm sorry, I did the excuse because I've seen, like, Jim Sterling has shown charts on his show where EA, from EA themselves, that shows their game development costs going down. So there is no fucking it's this there's there's none of this excuse that it's really really too expensive to develop games now. We really have to rip you off at every opportunity because if it's costing you so much that you can't develop a game, then you shouldn't be developing games. I'm sorry, find a more efficient way of doing it. And also the other problem is kind of your this is more I hit my Wi-Fi stick. That's not a good thing. Whoops. Um. It might come back on. Yeah, it has. Um. Yeah, the the push for ultimate graphics, and I kind of touched on it a little bit, not much, but a little bit. For me, the PlayStation Two was fine graphics-wise, but no, they had to find a way to be bigger and better and the way they thought they, they could do it was be 
shinier and prettier than everyone else. But then, of course, that takes major development time. So you're spending more time developing the actual look of the game than the substance of the game, resulting in shittier games. And then you wonder why people aren't happy with you and aren't buying so many games. And then you blame us and put microtransactions in the game to squeeze money out of the few poor saps who are stupid enough to put their hand in their pocket over and over again because they're fucking retarded. So, to me, like, people like... I have no problem with, like, good DLC, for example. Like, genuinely good DLC, like, um... Or back in the day, we called them expansion packs because they actually expanded the base game. That was the point of them. Uh, one of the best examples I can think of is Warcraft 3 and the Frozen Throne. I mean, that is probably the most epic example of an expansion pack. I mean, there's loads of them. I mean, The Sims took the piss with its expansion packs. EA again, isn't it, really? But, like, The Sims 1 wasn't so bad, if I remember correctly. But I digress. As I said, there's there's a lot of problems with gaming, and uh, this glorified loot box, well, glorified gambling, really, because you are taking a gamble on what you get out of it. You can't, you know. There's like I've played a few of the free weekends of Overwatch and leveled up a few times, and you get a loot box. I've only had a handful of loot boxes. I'm getting duplicates already, and and it's just like. But I don't want any of this shit. This is all pointless shit that I don't need. And yet it keeps dropping. I mean, even... I mean, Overwatch is a fucking... Overwatch, in a way, disgusts me a lot. Because Overwatch is the remnants of the MMORPG that they Blizzard were claiming to make called Titan. And they've basically hacked out, I think, the PvP section of it. Or the little bits of it that were working, even after so many years of development. And they just basically slapped a in game shop in it and they're making a mint. Crazy. But the thing is, as I said, it's gamers that aren't helping themselves. I'm one of these gamers of principle, I guess. I must be, it must be an old school gamer thing. But the moment FIFA started their shit with the FIFA Dream Team card system, I stopped buying it. They're not having my money. I'm not supporting a predatory gambling system that affects gameplay and it did affect my gameplay because as I said in the last video I used to enjoy editing the players ages and pissing around with them it's a single player game as far as I, if it's online you play with the standard teams fair enough I get that but when you're dicking around it's like when you're playing Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 or Skyrim or something when you you know you mod mod the game you dick around you're not affecting anyone else's gameplay, so why the fuck should they stop you doing it? And yet they have. Or they did. So it's like, fuck you. And also, fuck you because you put these cards in. And basically, a big fuck you to EA for making card packs or loot boxes popular, you know, getting them to where they are today, pretty much. Um, without FIFA making, like, £800 million a year or $800 million a year off FIFA... Yeah, that's just the microtransactions from FIFA as well, from what I, if I remember correctly, from Jim Stern. As I said, it, I don't sit and do research. It's just my feelings and like what I've seen in the news. And I, I watch Jim Sterling a lot, and he's I don't agree with him all the time. Can be a dick sometimes, but the guy is generally a real. You know, he's a re he's really honest. I may not agree with him all the time. He may be a bit of a dick sometimes, and some of his stuff I don't find funny. But he's got a good head on his shoulders and he knows about the gaming industry and he's got those fuckers' ta um, numbers, basically. He knows exactly what they're fucking like. Um, so fair play to him. And I hope... This is what we need. We need more people to point out what is going wrong with gaming. We need gamers... Like when Gamergate happened, gamers just united and showed that you can't fuck with us. And it happens a lot. It's it's more PC gaming it happens. Because console gamers seem to just roll over and take whatever their Sony or Microsoft overlords feed them. But generally the 
the gaming community, more than a lot of communities it seems, will not bow down to pressure. We generally stick up for ourselves. And this is one of the things that we need to all stick together on and understand. When people say, it, what does it affect you when I buy things? You're not seeing our side. When you say something like that, it does affect us. Because they rebalance the game around these fucking lockboxes. Which means we have to play the game longer, or grind longer, or actually fork out money to get to where we want to get to. All because you're stupidly willing to put money in. So you've ruined, you've made my gameplay experience worse, all because you want a shortcut. You don't want to play the actual game, you want to skip the game. You've got to understand that you are not helping anyone. You're only lining the pockets of these big ass gaming companies. And it's, it's got to stop. I mean, if more gamers didn't pre-order, didn't buy uh, microtransactions, uh, didn't fall for all this ridiculous bullshit all the time. The gaming industry would be a lot better. It's getting to the point where governments are having to step in. And I remember the last time this happened, because it happened with Mortal Kombat. When Mortal Kombat came out, and Night Trap, and all those sorts of games, it caused shit. And basically, the gaming industry was told by governments around the world at the time, you either regulate yourselves, or we will regulate you. And they actually listened that time because they introduced an aging, um, you know, an age system. Because before that, there wasn't an age system. You could, like, you could buy any game. If, if it was super violent, they didn't give a shit. It was like, well, don't have age restriction. There you go, have it. No one cared. But when Mortal Kombat came out, and the Mega Drive version had the blood enabled, uh, that caused all sorts of riots because... We were all going to hell and Satan was going to take our souls and we are going to go on mass killing sprees because we played this awful, awful game. But, like, like I said, if the gaming industry doesn't buck its fucking ideas up and regulate itself and stop being such greedy bastards... <coughs> and that means, gamers, you have to stop giving developers so much money, you have to stop spending money in their in-game stores. If they sell you a game for 50, 60 quid, which a special edition or a digital deluxe edition could be, then, you know, I don't mind if a company does, a like Blizzard do good digital deluxe editions. You don't get an advantage in the game, you just get a couple of extra mounts, um, a toy, and, and other bits. They don't make or break the game. They don't, you know, I've got nearly 300 mounts. One more mount is is really not going to make me any better than if I had, well, I think I've got 297. If I've got 298 mounts, it's not going to make me any better. It just means I've got 298 mounts to pick from. Um, but when, so yeah, to, to summarize, to summarize this, because it's going to go on too long otherwise, gamers, what we need to do this is what we need to do. As I was saying, we need to stop spending on microtransactions in full price games. If you are playing a free to play game and they have got a non predatory um, shop, by all means support the developer. I have no problem with that because that's how they're going to make their money. You can't expect something for nothing. That's fair enough. But if you're buying something like, you know, Star Wars Battlefront 2 and they expect you to then spend an exorbitant amount of money to be able to get the skins and the characters that you want, then say no. Don't buy the game. Put your foot down. Complain. Review bomb them on Steam because that fucking works quite effectively, it seems. Um, make a noise. Make a fuss. Do not remain silent anymore because this is what is causing us to get fucked. And we are getting fucked right now. If we're not getting fucked by the GPU makers on the PC side, we're getting fucked by the game makers who think that, you know, we're a bottomless pit of money because some idiots appear to be a bottomless pit of money. I mean, I've seen people talking about whales who have spent £15,000 on one fucking game. What the fuck do you spend £15,000 on in one game? Honestly. 
I mean, I could do it in, um, possibly do it in Star Trek. Possibly. I don't know. But, you know, you'd have to, you'd buy every ship, you'd have every, everything in the game. It just, it just, it just blows my mind. So, yeah, we, we need to band together, gamers. We need to stop doing this shit. We need to, to tell developers it doesn't need to look photorealistic. Why can't developers go for a stylized art form that will save them money on graphics and development and stuff? You know, why does everything have to be so super polished that you can see your fucking reflection in a puddle of water 50 foot away in game? Because that's the way it's going with some of them. And then you need a fucking horribly powerful rig to run these games. I mean, there's some games now that are saying, we kind of recommend you have a, GTI, a GTX um, 1060. I got a GTX 660. I don't know fucking Oprah running that game. You know, just... I mean, obviously, my lap, my even my laptop would struggle to run that. But it, you know, it, just there's there's just so many problems in gaming. You probably need to, I probably need a podcast with a few people on, or do a stream and talk to some people and bounce ideas. Because when you're only one person, it doesn't it, you, it, it's it's not very really conducive to thinking up ideas how to fix this. There's a lot of ways how to fix this, really. I mean, one of the biggest ways is gaming companies stop being so fucking greedy. You make massive profits. If you... If they halved the amount they made from microtransactions, it, they'd still... Like, for example, if EA ha You know, if EA was half as predatory as they were in FIFA and they only made £400 million a year, that's still four hundred million pound a year for basically fucking nothing. I just, as I say, we need, as I say, need to get through to gamers. We need people to understand. I'm never gonna let you up now. Um, but that, that's just my little rant on that. And um, I'm gonna try and find my webcam so I can read um, the Quran again. Because that's fun. That's a fast way of getting demonetized. One of my other videos that I uploaded earlier, it was demonetized before I'd even fucking uploaded it. It was in limited state the moment it got uploaded. You know, the moment I hadn't even published it. Like, I had to reload the page. I had to go into my video manager to actually publish it. And by the time I went from the upload page to the video manager page, it had already been put into limited state and I just realised I was gesturing with my left hand with the microphone in it so the audio quality may not have been very good at that point. Um, <laughs> I'm just a muppet. Anyway guys, I hope you're all good. Think about what I said. Seriously, think about what I said. And if you got a problem, you know, with what I said, if you think that I'm wrong, then by all means tell me why. I'm I'm always happy to hear why the big multi-billion pound companies couldn't possibly afford to not make quite so much money and not be quite so predatory, maybe. Maybe you could convince me. But anyway, thank you guys. It's been great. Take care and bye-bye for now.